This is the .mod.aio. It was released, well this is version 2 actually, but the original one was released a while ago now, and along with the version 2 coming to think of it. And it was released at a time in the market where a load of companies like SXK, uh, in fact SXK released two, companies in China were not releasing clones of the billet box, they were releasing their own idea of what a borrow tank device should be. Sure, some companies borrowed a lot of aspects of the original billet box design, but other companies just went out there with their own designs, like Dovepo with the BP mod system, for instance. They went out there with a completely new radical design. But this was like two years ago. When this thing came out, at the height of the borrow tank, or the original borrow tank craze, we're now in the second generation of the borrow tank craze, but when this thing came out, I was sitting here scratching my head, along with a fair number of other reviewers actually, because let me show you something, right? So I've got the, uh, I've just dropped the drip tip thing, hold on, where did you go? You've just rolled away, haven't you? Yes, you have, I'll pick that up later on. This is a Van de Vape Pulse AIOS, and it uses standard borrow tank tanks. Let's take the panel off of this, wrong side, and put this side beside, shall we? Just like that. Come on. Come on. There we go. So there's the .mod.aio with its small hole, and there's the Van de Vate one with the huge borrow tank hole. What .mod decided to do, to do was go down a proprietary road, which everyone, including myself, thought was going to be a big mistake. Turns out China looked at this and went, oh, we can make tanks for that, and that's exactly what they did. How well is this going to perform? This is the Pandora, uh, Pandora dot mod RBA for the dot mod uh, dot AIO. Well, only one way to find out. It's time for a borrow tank review. So, .mod.aio, I think the review for this is still on the channel, it's not one of the ones I had to remove, but yeah, it's basically it's basically a billet box-esque device, there's the bit where the tank goes in, on the other side you've got your battery, your simple three stage power, well five stage power actually, and the fire button with the mouthpiece at the top. Lots of fans of this because it's very small, very light-ish and very compact, but we're not looking at this because I've already reviewed it, we're looking at this instead. The Pandora.RBA, starting at the top. There's the chimney hole where the this thing screws into. Fill port is done via a rubber stopper. There we go, that's where you put your juice in. Airflow control's done via the way the Pandora's always been done. This side nut thing here that's all, that's all been knurled at the top. That's it in two millimetres. That is it on the 2.5 millimetre setting, and that is it on the 3 millimetre setting. At the very bottom, you have got a big gaping hole. That's where the air comes out, and you've got your positive pin there with two screws to hold everything together. However, it doesn't end there, right? First of all, before we look at the deck, we'll have a look at the chamber itself. Very, very thin chamber. Machining's a little bit on the iffy side, but, ah, well, let them off with it. Very, very small chamber, juice drips in from these two points here and it will impact, because your coil goes across like that, it will impact the cotton that you put here and put here. Now, this is currently rigged for mouth, uh, not mouth to lung, it's currently rigged for direct to lung because it's got the huge openings that you can see here. However, if you grab this, in fact the easiest way to do this would be to close this thing off slightly, get a screwdriver, and give it a nudge from the inside, like that. If you pull this out, what you're able to do is grab this, which drops it down to one millimeter, 0 0.8, 1 1.8, 1.5, 1.2, and one. Also inside the packaging, to replace the wide open chamber chimney you've got here, as a much thinner one, and this is what ex this is exactly what we're going to be doing here. We are going to be changing this. Uh, we're going to be changing this to a mouth to lung setting, and I need the little tool thing for that. Hold on. Uh, where is it? Oh, they don't have one. I 
thought they would have had one. Because that, see that there? I mean, you could probably do it with a rather large flathead screwdriver, which I don't fucking have for some strange apparent reason. Or maybe, is this gonna fit? No, I didn't think it would. Right, hold on folks, I need to find something to jab into there to open this thing up. Will these do it? <laughs> Shouldn't really use scissors for something like this, but I don't have a choice. Let's unscrew you from in there. No, it needs a bit more. They could have done with putting a little tool in here to do this with, but they didn't. There we go. Right. We need to pop you out. This is the one for direct to lung, wide bore. We're now putting the thin bore in for mouth to lung. So that pops in like that. We need to get the bottom of the tank, pop you in. Just like that, and then screw this in. Now, I've already tried this, actually with direct to lung, more about that when, we give, when I give you my final thoughts back up top, but when it comes to the dot mod dot AIO, all iterations of it, I've always used it as a mouth to lung tobacco vape because the mouth to lung side of things is phenomenal in that little kit. There we go. That's the thin board in place. And now all we need to do is get the small hole mouth to lung airflow controller and simply push it into the base, we need to find, there it is, there's the latch, and then give it a shove, and that's it all in place. This is us on 0.8 millimeter, which is there, which is essentially a Spire Nautilus with one air hole open. We're now on one millimeter, which is there, which is a Spire Nautilus with one and a half. 1.2, a Spire Nautilus with two air holes open. We are now on 1.5, a Spire Nautilus with two and a half air holes open, and we are now on 1.8. Eight, which is very close to an Aspire Nautilus with three air holes open, definitely rigged for mouth to lung. And I'm going to get the direct to lung stuff and pop it all to one side. Now we're going to pop this on its little build stand. Yeah, they've actually included a 510 build stand to build on. We just screw that in there like that, make it nice and tight, and we get our red stag built up and pop this on here. Just like that. So, let's pop the coil in here. Uh, we are going to go like legs down. That goes in like that. That goes in like that. Let's pull that out a bit more. So it's a low density alien that I'm popping in here. There we go. Make sure that's leveled out. Screw that down. Same with the other side. Screw that down. There. And what we need to do is we need to pull you up to kink the legs out and then push it back down so they're not interacting. I mean, I could have taken another wrap off here, but as long as that is overlaying that and not touching it, which they're not, because I pulled it up and then pushed it back down again, it should be fine. Let's find out. We need the heat to do the work for us. Just let that heat transfer over. I might want to turn that down, actually. There we go. Keep pulsing it. And then give it a rake. There we go, glowing from the inside out. Perfect. And the coil's coming out at 0 0.71. Nope, hold on. There we go, 0 0.5, that's more like it. Because he's actually rated for 0 0.5. Now what we need to do is pop some cotton in here now. This is kind of a tricky little fella to actually wick on. The way that this thing works is, right, you have got these indentations at the very end there, but if you look at how these indentations line up to the main tank, they're actually locked off. They're blocked off. These indentations are only here to guide your coil master pole on where to mount the coil. The actual 
juice intakes line up with these little kind of oval or half oval shapes here and half oval shapes here. So you don't really need a lot of cotton in this. In fact, the less the better, because if you overstuff this, you basically overstuff the entire juice intake system and you'll end up with a load of dry hits, which was, which was the basic downfall. I think it was the BP mods, um, dot RBA. They come out with a juice intake system very, very similar to this. And it actually tripped up quite a lot of people because they were putting far too much cotton in there. And the cotton was choking off the juice supply. Here's what I do. I essentially cut this level with the edge. Right there. And right there. Then what I do, just level this up to make sure it's equal in either side. Then what I do, as I push this over and then get the cotton to rest inside that little half oval shape. Push the cotton over, let it find its own way in and then I push the cotton over like that. And what you'll end up with is two tiny dots of cotton on either side. It is super, super thin wicking that goes on with this, which also means because there's not a lot of wick in this, it also means there's not a lot of liquid sitting in a reservoir. So if you don't get the wicking on this right, you will end up with a rather nasty dry hit almost immediately. Yeah. Tricky thing to wick this little fella. Let's put a little bit of juice there, little bit of juice in the coil, little bit of juice there. Quick fire, let that just soak in. Quick fire again, and again, and that's it all saturated out. I need to make sure that there is no cotton spilling out into that little hole there, otherwise there's gonna be a dodder of cotton trapped underneath the main tank ledge. Right there, do a very, bit, very, very quick clean up of the cotton. Right there, and all we do now is get the top of the tank, push it on, and we're basically done. It is, once you get to know it, it's a very, very easy tank to wick on. But if you don't get the wicking right, oh boy, do you find out within the first couple of hits. Now what we're going to do is basically fill this thing up. I'm just going to drop this liquid in from the side. Oops. Come on, soak in, and then bust the bubble. Is it bust? <laughs> it is now. See, this is not big enough. I mean, you could, could you? Nah, it's trapping here. It's not quite big enough. The juice fill hole here for a classic, classic um, this. The older style Gorilla bottles, so filling this thing up it's a little bit tricky. What you've basically got to do is kind of dribble the juice in and let gravity do the work for you. Just like that. Eventually, you start to get the hang of it. This would be annoying if you're doing direct to lung, but because it's mouth to lung, you don't need to fill the tank up that much. And as you can see, it's slowly filling up. Yep, you baby, you could have done with making this juice, uh, this juice fill hole that little bit bigger. But there we go. That is the Pandora.RBA filled up and ready to go. Let's head back up top. Back up top with the Pandora.RBA in the dot mod dot AIO. I've got the airflow set for 1.2 millimetres. I've got the power set to level four, so it's a slightly warmer vape. And we're off. Eighteen milligram, free base. <coughs> oh, oh.
and I'm going to stop there before I get a head spin. If this wasn't wick right, I would have got a dry hit on the third pull, or it would have started flooding and gurgling on the fourth pull. This is a tricky little, we're on the negative and positive points, the gnaw points first. This is a tricky little borrow tank to get used to because, because of its size. It's a very, very small, very confined deck. And what Yacht Vape decided to do was sacrifice the width of the juice intake wells that you drop your cotton into to give the deck itself a little bit more length for slightly longer coils. The problem is if you shorten out the juice well of a tank, what you're essentially doing is lessening the amount of give and take that the tank will give someone who wicks it wrong. If you wick this wrong, you will know about it within the first three or four hits. If you haven't wicked it with enough cotton, you'll start to get gurgling within the fourth hit and the tank will flood out. If you give it too much cotton, you will know about it on the third pull. You will in dry hit instantly because there's not enough cotton in there to act as a mini reservoir to lock in excess juice if you chain hit when you're mouth to lung in. This is why it's tricky. Now I've tried this as a direct to lung bit of kit. Everyone knows that normally when it comes to tanks, I generally tend to get the wicking nailed on the second or third go. Straight out the box, second or third go. Sometimes if it's a simple tank, I can get the wicking right first time. But the direct to lung side of things, because you're pushing more power into the coil and you're running the dot mod dot AIO full max power with something like a 0.4 or a 0.5 ohm alien, like a high density alien, there is no room for error. There is literally zero room for wicking mistakes. Because you're cloud chucking and you're direct lunging, the vapour is constantly sucking juice up from that cotton. And if you don't have that wicking right, boom, dry hit. Even I found it tricky to wick for the direct to lung side of things. Even I found it tricky to wick. The way I've wicked it in the table cam is the way that I've wicked it for both direct to lung and mouth to lung. You don't need a lot of cotton. You really don't. Cut it level with the edge of the base of the, 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 base of the tank. Don't rake it, just cut it level, drop it straight down, and there's enough of a tuft sticking up to act as a dam against the gravity feeds at the base of the tank, but it's not too much of a dam where it's stopping the liquid coming in. But direct to lunging? I mean, I mean I've, I've been using this little thing for about, about three weeks, right? About three weeks. The first week I was using it, I was using it direct to lung with the dot mod dot AIO set to max power. And I had a, I had a normal everyday alien. Uh, I think it was a triple core alien in here. Something like five wraps coming out at 0.25. And any time I took a hit, I'm thinking, is this it? Is this going to be the dry hit from hell? Because I kept thinking in my head, there's very little cotton in this. There is no reservoir. There's no locked in juice because there's fuck all cotton. But it worked fine. It worked fine. But I will say, if, if you're new to the borrow tank scene, if you're new to this little fella, it may take some practice, right? Because put it this way, for the direct to lung side of things, and this is, this is where I learned how to wick this from the direct to lung side of vaping. It took me about seven attempts, different wicking methods, cutting the wicks into a point, shaving off the top of the cotton, cutting the wicks at an angle, cutting the wicks at a down angle slope. And then I went, you know what, F this. Cut it level, drop it down, and it worked. <laughs> so it's like, fuck. But when it works, you get a damn good vape on it. Good points. Here we go. No gurgle. Hear that? Mm. Best sig liquid in here. The, the last, the, is it best? Yes. The last dregs of the big, the best sig liquids flew cured Virginia and. Yeah, my love affair with the dot mod dot AIO is back again uh, because 
this was basically sitting here on the table, slowly gathering dust after a while, because I did have the BP, I did, what BP mods ones this? The Pioneer. I did have the Pioneer dot mod dot AIO rebuildable head in this, but then I started using a rebuildable tank again for mouth to lung, and this thing just sat here gathering dust. You can tell by the state of the juice, it's like tar in here now. But with this little pie, with this little, uh, with this little Pandora head in here, the flavour is fucking phenomenal. That's got a lot to do with the coil, mind you, but the flavour's fucking phenomenal from this thing. Mm. The love affair with the dot mod, dot is back. I'm going to end up using this for another five or six months until another good mouth to lung tank comes in. Other good points, airflow control. But the airflow control, because it's a Pandora, the airflow control is right there. You don't need to pull the bottle tank out and fuck around with an airflow control ring. It's right there. So once this bottle tank is in, and because when you align this with the airflow control facing out, the juice fill hole is also facing out. Once this is in, you don't need to remove it again until you're changing the cotton uh, or dry burning your coil to get rid of the gunk. They've thought of everything, the folks over at Yacht Bait. They've thought of absolutely everything. There's been a number of times where the way that the fill hole's been done in these kinds of kits and the way that the tank has to be mounted, you've got to keep pulling the tank out to fill the damn thing up. But with this, Everything is on the outside. They've made it super, super easy. Super easy. So if you are a fan of the .mod.aio and you are comfortable with wicking, even tricky wicking situations, and you want something a bit different for mouth to lung, something that's going to give you the punchy flavour that you expect from a borrow tank, with just that little bit extra, I mean, hell, it's got me in love with the dot mod dot AIO again. I would go for the Pandora because it's a very, very good little platform if a little bit tricky to wick. There is a downside with it. It's definitely tricky to wick, but once you nail the wicking, the flavour, even direct to lung, the flavour is phenomenal from this thing. It really is. Mm. And that was, cover off, wrong cover. That was <laughs> the Pandora dot RBA. Big thanks to the folks over at Yachtbeat for sending it over for a review. If you thought this review sucked and what to do down below, thought, give that thumbs up. Very fast at the top, you've got the latest video, no matter what video you're watching in the channel. And if that's latest What's Up Sunday update vlog in the middle, shout out to the hashtag Flu Farmy, the Patreon subscribe stars and the YouTube members for keeping Vape Mac afloat financially. That's what's been for this studio. And underneath me is the Vape Mac logo. Click on that to subscribe. As always, folks, thanks for watching and have a good one.